Hey guys, so um, I'm not feeling 100% today, a little bit emotionally, a little bit physically. Um, I assume we've got some kind of little cold or maybe a little bit of bronchitis or something. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Oh, and the secret to every YouTuber? We're only dressed from the top up. <laughs> I'm not going to call myself a YouTuber because this isn't my job and I don't make money off of it. But you know. So, I guess I just wanted to talk. And I didn't want to make this video completely about what happened to me and my family because I understand that. Hang on, let me turn this TV off. This is stupid. <laughs> I didn't want this video to be completely about me because it's not really about me. It's, I know a lot of people are going through some difficult things and things that are unexplainable and things that shouldn't ever happen because they don't make any sense in the world. You know, I had, um, okay. So, I guess I should tell you what kind of sparked this video, and, um... A year ago, yesterday, um, my uncle passed away trying to come to my sister to graduation. We don't know the... my family doesn't know the exact cause of that, only that he crashed into, um, the back of a a truck hauling like a, a chipper and um, he passed away on the scene. Um, there are people saying that there was some texting and driving involved. There were other people saying that he was driving erratically and um, we suspect that he may also have been going through a diabetic episode. Um, if anybody knows when your blood sugar gets really low, you kind of fall into a little bit of like a di diabetic coma. You know, he might have thought he was low and took too much insulin or something, but we don't know and he's not, he's not here and it's just really messed up and really not fair. I guess we all hope that when we're gone, there is something. We all hope that, you know, we're going to see the people we lost again, or, you know, it, it's hard to believe that there's just nothing. You know, people say it gets easier, but I don't think it gets easier. I think we just learn how to deal with it, and we learn how to live our lives, and we learn how to cope, but... I don't think it gets easier, you know, you're always going to have those reminders and the photographs and the home videos and the memories. I think one of the first things that you kind of start forgetting is the sound of that person's voice. You kind of have like their clothes and you can't forget the face, but you really miss the voice and you miss the laughter and you just miss talking to them. My uncle wasn't a religious man. At least he said he wasn't. I mean, like, he grew up an altar boy, and my family has been pretty religious, and, like, we have priests in our family and stuff. Um, God, I'm crying. Stop crying. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it was hard for him to balance what his career was and how intelligent he was with believing in something that you can't see and that you can't touch and it's something that's hard to fathom, you know? So many people believe that there's an equation or a solution to everything and sometimes there's just not. And then you always hear people ask, 
you know, why do kids get cancer, or why does, why do things like this happen to good people and good families, and I wish I had an answer, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you hope that You hope that we can all kind of like learn to be okay and learn to keep going and I have my ups and downs. I've definitely had a bit of a down year. Um, I'm trying my best to stay positive. I'm watching a lot of baseball because it's kind of like my family's thing. We love sports. Um, I'm just hanging out with friends. Um, I nearly lost a friend of my sister's the other day, um, and then, um, a, on a good note, um, my sister's brother's sister, yeah, sorry, um, has gone into remission with her leukemia, so that's really good news, and, um, hopefully that'll stay away, and she'll be back to you know, running and stuff soon. Um, I think, you know, hearing what the doctors had to say about her, it was because she was such an athletic person who would run as often as she did and as well as she did. And she wasn't a person who would drink or even smoke or even do pot, which pretty much everybody has tried. Um, That wasn't her, and um, you know, for somebody to be 25, I think she's 25 or 23. I always forget. I think she's 25 because I believe she's a little bit older than I am. Um, yeah, and then um, we also, I didn't know this. I mean, I, I knew that he had some sort of medical issue, but, um, the boy my sister is dating, whose sister has leukemia, yeah, same kid, um, he actually had cancer when he was really young, um, I think he was 13 when he had it, and he's 18 now, almost 19 now, he had cancer in his, uh, wrist, where they had to, uh, remove parts of his carpal tunnel, so, he, um, instead of, like, you can see the scars on his wrist are pretty big, but also, sorry, it's gross, um, just the, the muscles that kind of go to, like, the fingers and stuff, when he moves his hand and everything, it just, the veins and stuff pop out, like, they're not held in, it's really weird, and you see him do, like, things like push-ups and whatnot, and he'll do them, like, on his fist instead of, like, flat, and... I guess you learn to adjust to the disabilities and keep going and you know it's been a couple of years but that family's literally got screwed over like I, uh, sometimes it's just not fair you know? I don't know if this video will help anybody, but I think, just think about it, don't, don't sweat the small things, you know, don't sweat things that just don't matter, and try not to get upset about just meaningless things. It's the day of this graduation, we are sitting in a car, we're calling my uncle because he hadn't shown up yet and we had to leave to head into the city. <laughs> I was wearing this brown and white, it was like a tie-dye dress with like some orange and stuff and it had like boning and everything so I mean it fit really well and um, I borrowed shoes for my mom and I remember they were really tight and 
it just didn't kind of matter, you know, like, I mean, but you don't, you don't forget that, you don't forget every detail, and you don't forget the passages and the stories and the eulogies, but, so, we get the phone call, and I'm sitting next to my dad, we're sitting in the car, my brother's riding in the back, because he let me, he, he was letting me ride shotgun, and we were all kind of riding together. My sister and mom were already left because the the graduates they don't they didn't want them to be driving, so um, my mom took her. And um, of course, they had to be there a little a little while earlier for like rehearsal and whatnot. So we get to the city and we park. And this is after um, finding out and just watching your dad break down. My dad was better than I thought he was going to be, I guess. Um, obviously he lost his brother, so it wasn't, it wasn't easy for him, and I know that, and I know it still tears him apart. Just watching him break down, and then he just, I felt like he didn't say anything for the rest of the day, you know, and I don't think he could have without completely losing it. Whenever my dad has something really awful happen to him, he kind of just shuts off. It's hard to watch, you know, and it was hard to watch him yesterday, but I kind of have to let him have his days because that he's allowed to on that day. It's complete crap. So yeah, I keep bouncing back and forth because I'm not really sure what to say. So we get to the city in these stupid shoes, and I can't walk in them because I can't walk in heels. I can't wear a dress without heels through graduation because I can't very well show up in flip flops. So I take off my shoes and I start running through DC barefoot. I just didn't care. I mean, I really didn't. So, anyway, we got to graduation and we're trying to suck it up and we didn't want to tell my sister because obviously we didn't want to like ruin her day because that was her day so you know I'm trying to watch and listen to all these speeches and you know the stupid choirs and I just that was kind of the last place I wanted to be at the moment and you're trying so hard not to break down and you know my mom doesn't know and my sister doesn't know and we're like we're not going to tell you either one of them but parents know when you're not okay they're really good at knowing when you're not okay so um afterwards we walked out and we waited for my sister to come out obviously because she's like you know talking to her friends and stuff So she comes out, well, before she came out, um, my mom asked me if I was alright, and she actually asked me if my shoes were bothering me that bad. I told her it wasn't the shoes, and I told her she completely lost it. We didn't tell my sister until later in the day, not until we had dinner because we wanted her to be able to eat. Dinner, dinner didn't taste like anything, you know, I'm watching my brother try to eat his crab cakes or whatever because, and he's spitting them up into a napkin because he just can't get it down. And I'm doing the same thing across the table. <laughs> I think my sister probably knew nothing. Something was off. So we got home, um, my sister had a boyfriend with her and I guess that kind of helps because she had somebody her age and he's just a good kid, he's a really good kid. And we told her and um, 
time it took it a little bit to set in with her because it didn't feel real. It just didn't. My sister being the person that she is, she decided to go to her all night grad party. I guess she just needed to escape and blow off some steam. And then the following day after the all night grad, my sister was supposed to go to the beach with a couple of her friends. She went, but she took my brother with her because the last thing she wanted to do was be around these happy people that just didn't care and didn't give a shit. You know, these people that could never possibly get it. So she took my brother with her and just the two of them kind of weren't really into the whole clubbing thing. So they mostly like laid out on the beach and just kind of talked. I think they really just needed to talk. And me, I stayed home with my parents and I tried to I just tried to be somebody that they could lean on in the moment because they were both really, really badly affected. And I was in a moment where I just, I couldn't be upset because I had to be that person to lean on. And yeah, I'm gonna stop the video now.